Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, have you ever been for a fox's wedding? Well, a fox's wedding is not as adventurous as it sounds. It is just that when the sun is shining brightly and there is a heavy downpour of rain, people usually say, oh, this must be the fox's wedding because certain combinations are strange and even this could be acceptable or pleasant a nice surprise shower of rain when there is strong sunshine but there are certain combinations that are absolutely unacceptable and today we are looking at such a combination which we can call as Christian pop idolatry Friends, there are certain things that are bad. But as our English language assists us to understand, a bad thing can become worse and can become absolutely unacceptable or intolerable. And today we are talking about Christian pop idolatry. Idolatry is bad and it's, it's a serious thing. But Christian pop idolatry, as you would come to see, is absolutely unacceptable, absolutely unforgivable. Now, what is idolatry? Now, we read a lot about it in the Old Testament. In the ancient times, idolatry referred to where a person or people would take a stone object and revere it and worship it as God. Now, the problem here was they were giving the glory that was due to the creator to a created object. Moreover, wherever there was idolatry, it was always associated with certain strange rituals, including human sacrifice and even at times certain orgies. Now, when we look at commandments, at Christian commandments, the first commandment and as our Lord Jesus would emphasize the most important commandment is where God says you shall have no other God I am the Lord your God and to violate this commandment was the greatest sin when the people went into idolatry they were practically cut away and they received the worst of curses so here we see this is what idolatry was in the ancient times. While the sin does not get in any way less grave, today we have different forms of idolatry. For instance, we have the money idolatry. Perhaps we could say that money is the most powerful idol today. It has so many worshippers, so many followers. Today, for the sake of money, you are allowed to do anything you want to. And what you do for the sake of money is counted as smart. So how do you know that you are idolizing money? We must remember, friends, whatever we idolize before God, it is still as serious, as grave, and as much a curse as it ever was. So... How do you know that you are idolizing money? First is when you are ready to do anything for money. You're ready to cheat. You're ready to be unjust, say, to an employee or to your employer. You are doing another business with your office time or your office resources. When you are ready to perhaps be unjust even to a sibling in the division of your property. When you find yourself hating someone or you see certain people, they will kill others for the sake of money. This means money has become your God. There are different forms also of idolatry. Apart from money, there is power. And we have seen politicians who will do anything for power. They don't mind even destroying people and maybe whole groups of people, communities of people in order to hold on to power. There is, of course, sex, pleasure, comfort, very many things that this world offers, fame and popularity that can become an idol. Where a person who is a parent 
a parent of children, she or he can give up their family because they have become enslaved to lust. Lust or sexual pleasure has become their God. Now here is where friends, we realize that are also at this time, in this point of time, in this age, there are God men, God men, God women, you get to hear more about God men. Now God men is a person who has taken the role of God. They control every detail of the lives whom, of those who follow them and their control is always as it would eventually be proved towards a certain personal and selfish benefit. They control people or rather they control them in order to exploit them. Now this is a second type of idolatry that we see in this time. There's a third type of idolatry and perhaps it's something very many of you have experienced. When you fall in love, when you are infatuated and sometimes you see this even among married people where you look at the other as God. So that other person, your spouse or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever you are in love with, you are rather infatuated with, this person controls your life to the point that that other person has the power to make you happy, to make you sad, to make you even give up on life. Have you seen how certain politicians, when they die, there are people who would die with them? Well, if any person, even if it be someone so close to you, legitimately close to you, but who leads you to a point of wanting to kill yourself, it means this person has become an idol in your life. And the next type of idolatry we see is the rock star or the pop idolatry. So we see this where there are some super celebrities, some rock stars, uh, music singing sensations or film stars or even certain uh, super charismatic uh, politicians. Such people could have certain die-hard fans. Not certain, but they could have quite a following of die-hard fans. And what do these die-hard fans do? Whatever their idol does becomes a fascination for them. They would try to have the same hairstyle, the same mannerisms, perhaps the same style of clothing. And this extends when this celebrity makes certain grave mistakes in life. Maybe they slip into drugs or they're entering into a licentious lifestyle, this becomes acceptable and maybe even admired by the diehard fan. So what happens when a rock star is taking drugs, immediately those who idolize this rock star would easily slip into drugs. When the rock star lives a licentious lifestyle, maybe into certain habits of sin, like you hear sometimes of a rock star who's abusing children. Now, a person who has idolized this rock star could even condone the evil that this celebrity figure is doing. Now, here is where we see that one figure, that great big public personality is corrupting a culture and leading people astray. But every human person has been given an intellect. And if they allowed that intellect to be put aside and they blindly followed this popular figure and made an idol out of him or her, we see that this person has completely gone against God. Now, when we look at all of this, finally, we come to what is perhaps the worst, the most unacceptable form of idolatry. And that is, we're coming quite close to home and that is Christian pop idolatry. Now, what am I referring to? Now, the fact is this, in the church and among Christian circles at large, especially with social media, but even otherwise, we have certain figures who have been raised up by God into very powerful, inspirational positions. Now, into this category, we could have anyone whom we look up to. It could be a priest, it could be a nun, it could be a religious figure. 
It could be a counselor whom we go to for advice, a spiritual counselor. It could be a confessor. It could be a very inspiring preacher. It could be a very talented gospel singer. It could be anyone who has an influence in the spiritual circles. Anyone who is guiding us in some way or the other in our spiritual journey of life. And while we know that these are people raised by God, we need to always be cautious. And I hope I'm not offending or scandalizing any one of us out there, but we need to be cautious. We need to be, we need to be just to them and to God and to ensure we do not slip into making idols out of these great and good leaders. Now, the first thing we need to note is anyone who has been raised up to a position where they are able to guide us, inspire us, influence us, every one of them have been raised to that position by God. So, what is due to them is respect. We need to respect them for the position they have. Whether we personally like them or not, anyone who is in a place of responsibility, who is being used by God, deserves our respect. And it is here that we must also understand that they have been raised there to guide us, that we can emulate them but not imitate them. So what is emulate? Emulate is when I look at an inspiring leader, a singer, a preacher, a priest, a counselor, confessor, whoever. When I look at this person, I can learn from their faith. And this is what St. Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. He says, those who have taught you the word of God, be inspired by their faith. So, we look at these persons and when we see the way they live their Christianity, we are strengthened in our commitment to Christ. So friends, this is the ultimate goal that I remain faithful and committed to Christ and the church. Now, let me tell you, you and I must be careful that Christ and the church cannot be separated. So every hero, every great leader, every influencer must lead me and only lead me to Christ and the church. Anyone who leads me away from Christ or even away from the church is becoming an idol. Now, why do I say we cannot separate Christ and the church? There are some people who say, for me, it's only Christ and then the church. Friends, scripture clearly tells us that the church is the body of Christ and you and I cannot decapitate. We cannot separate the head from the body. We cannot separate Christ from the church. Loyalty to Christ requires us to be loyal to the church. And so here is where, friends, we must know every leader, Christian leader, is been placed in our way for us to be inspired by them. For example, when you look at Pope Francis, he inspires us, reminds us to be merciful the way Jesus taught us to be merciful in the Gospels. It was radical and shocking at that time and it still is. He teaches us the value of suffering. He teaches us how to face accusations and oppositions with grace and holiness. Now, these are values that this heroic figure teaches us, but all the time leading us to Christ and to the truths taught by the church. Next, we see when we admire someone, we must be very conscious that they are humans. And therefore, there is a possibility that such a person can, maybe for that space of time that we are acquainted with them, they could be making certain mistakes in their life. They could be perhaps carried away by their position or by the way they are inspirational. And they could try to make a little fan club 
about the people, with the people they are supposed to lead to God. For instance, when a Christian leader decides to flaunt his lifestyle or her lifestyle, when instead of just conveying the truths of Christ, they could perhaps say, well, I have a drink once in a while. Now, what are they doing? They are leading us from Christ towards themselves. Every Christian leader is only meant to lead us to Christ. Secondly, suppose a Christian leader, a prayer group leader or a counselor leads us to get dependent on them. Now, for instance, especially very often in the charismatic circles, we could see a very gifted counselor. But when someone clings on to the counselor and requires the counselor to make every decision for them, should I marry this person? Should I take up this job? Should I go to this country? And the counselor will expect you to be as obedient as you are, to, as you are meant to be to God towards this person. You know very well that this counselor is playing the role of an idol. He is trying to use you for his or her own benefit of perhaps just feeling important. And here is where we come to the next point of Christian pop idolatry. And that is when a Christian leader uses his or her influence to divide. Now, for instance, you could hear maybe one prayer group leader saying, you shall not go to the prayer meeting of this other prayer group, or you shall not go to this retreat center. Now, when is it a problem? When is it a genuine problem? When suppose, when you fail to go to your own prayer meeting because you're going to 100 other prayer meetings, your prayer group leader could kind of correct you and say like, don't you be doing all these things when you should be here. And yet, you and I, we are adults and we can choose to be faithful to whichever prayer group or we could choose to follow services in a certain retreat center. Suppose our leader decides to went upon his followers, his personal grievances and draws you into ill will and gossip and division, we need to at this moment halt and say, I cannot be a party to any kind of evil. Evil in their habits, maybe exploitation in their groups, or any kind of negative attitudes that are unchristian. So here is where, friends, we must understand any leader is a person raised by God. We give them reverence, we give them respect, but we cannot allow their failures, their attitudes, their lifestyles to direct me away from God and away from what I have decided to do for God. At a retreat, perhaps you decided that you will never drink or you will not go for a party or you will not indulge in a certain pleasure that you know has in the past led you into serious problems. Now, at one point, if you hear a very renowned preacher saying it is okay to drink every night or every other day, you need to know that this person is being irresponsible and you can appreciate the gift he has or she has, the position he or she has, but you cannot approve of that comment or teaching or expression. So friends, finally, we must understand as we acknowledge that they are human and they can make mistakes, this also means you and I have no right to dismiss them. You and I have no right to condemn them. There's a great possibility that when we make idols out of leaders and when they fall from grace, we can make demons out of them. When we see a failing in a leader, we must understand firstly, it is a call to pray for them because every one of us as humans, we have flaws, we have failings, we have areas where we need to be convicted by the Holy Spirit and grow into the maturity of Christ. And secondly, when we see a leader fall or fail, it must be a message from God to us to watch our own step. Friends, here is where we see there is a beauty in the community of Christ that we are given inspiring leaders, gifted persons and influencers. And yet it is also a beautiful opportunity for you and me 
to reaffirm that for us it is Christ who is Lord. Idolatry in any form leads us away from the blessed existence of living in the glory of our Lord Jesus. So friends, I pray that today as we have heard this teaching, our hearts shall grow in love, in discernment and we shall be great and responsible influencers and leaders and blessings to those around us. We are here to praise you Lift our hearts and sing We are here to give you the best that we can bring. And it is a love rising from our hearts. Everything within us cries. Our Father, help us now to give you pleasure and delight, heart and mind and will that says, I love you, Lord. We are here to praise you lift our hearts and sing to this day god has made specially our hearts for each one of us to praise him to thank him to, to acknowledge this new day wonderful day that we can plans bring. that god has for us it is, it is not my will but yours Jesus rising from our heart it rises from my heart to love you and praise you God every Everything morning us cries. so much of joy Lord within us Lord Jesus help us now to give you help us now to give you pleasure and Pleasure and delight Heart and mind and will that say I love you Lord I love you Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus my Lord, my God You are so glorious Master Thank you God Thank you for this new day Jesus Glorious God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. First thing in the morning, Lord, we want to love you. We want to praise you. We want to give you glory, God. God, a new day for us to be in your presence, to love you, to thank you from the depths of our hearts, to tell you, how grateful we are for this extra day. Yes, Lord. We do not deserve it, but you blessed us with, Lord. And this blessing comes in abundance. As we read Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it tells us that God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit and is pouring of God's love is through blessing us with a new day and God always keeps his promise day after day because he knows he knows our hearts he knows our desires he knows everything that we have planned for the day he knows it 
But the question is, are we living God's ways? As we read in Romans 8, verse 8, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you have your own ideas, if you're not going in line with God's ways, my brothers, my sisters, it is doomed for you. But if you live a life new, afresh, in the love of Christ, in the love of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you begin to understand God's ways are beautiful. And His ways Every moment we say, Lord, show me your way. Teach me your path, Lord, that I may walk on it. Be with me, God, as I begin my work, as I begin my journey, as I begin to do things that you have blessed me with, Lord. Lord, give us the anointing for this day. And every day our prayer should be, Lord, let your anointing go before me. Let your ways be made smooth that I may walk on it. And that is my brothers and sisters, as we understand that God's ways ought to be right. And in God's plan, we must be grateful. We must tell the Lord that it is you that we want to thank you, Jesus. It is you that we want to give all glory and honor and praise to you because you are a living God, righteous and holy. With a grateful heart Yes Lord Give thanks Thank you for this new day To the Holy One Thank you for the give people you have given me God Because family, He's given My work Jesus My neighbors Christ, My colleagues His son Lord Give thanks Thank you for being my God With a grateful Jesus. heart Thank you for saving me, for coming to the Holy One. And thank you, Jesus, for giving us your Holy Spirit. That we may walk Jesus and know your heart. That your Holy Spirit will guide us in your word. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. The poor. Let the poor say, I am rich. I am because we have you, Lord. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, yes, Lord. let the weak say, I am strong. Strong in you, Jesus. Let the say I am rich. In the Holy Spirit, we are rich because of what the Lord God has, has done. Wonderful, done by giving us His only Son. For us, give thanks. give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. We ought to be grateful with to our grateful God. Heart. Never ever think that God is not blessing us, is not bestowing His riches on us, He's not giving us good health. In every situation, acknowledge God and give Him thanks. Acknowledge God and love the Lord. As the Lord comes to bless each one of us, because the Lord will bless us for this day, my brothers and sisters. We give Him thanks.
give thanks. We give Him thanks. We give you thanks, Jesus. We give you thanks, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for inviting and giving us your love. Thank you for holding us close to you, God. Thank you for your word. For everything, God. Thank you for this life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 0402231. 0000014 HDFC Bank Chalakudi Branch IFSC Code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to Divine Retreat Center at gmail.com